How's it going? I'm Jared Gillis. Welcome to another All About RVs. Today we're going to look at the electrical system upgrades we did with Mark and Trish with Keep Your Day Dream. Well, I hope you guys are ready for this because we have a lot to cover today. Mark gave me a call and he told me everything that they wanted to upgrade on their rig and oh my goodness, it is a doozy. It is a ton of equipment. With all these things that we installed, it was like an, an RV electrical makeover. And I, I can't cover exhaustively all the pieces and all the things that we, we put into this. So here's going to be the, the hopefully the plan for today. Um, I'm gonna sit down and we're gonna go over what I liked, what kind of stood out to me for each of these pieces, uh, the big components that we put into this electrical makeover. And then we'll try and make sense of it all, how it all fits together and goes together with a, a diagram that I made. I love this stuff. I actually get excited about this. So let's just start with the roof down and look at some of this equipment. So the solar that they got, the package they got was from Zamp Solar. I believe it was three solar panels at 160 watts each, so it gave them 480 watts for their solar array. There are a lot of great choices for solar panels these days out there, but let me just tell you a few of the things that I liked about these panels. They made the wiring extremely simple. They have a, a basically a combiner box that mounts on the roof, so uh, when you connect all those pieces, it, it's just extremely simple. And then I really appreciated the, the mounting hardware, the way it fits into the frame of the solar panel and then it basically clamps down on that so that we can slide that bracket anywhere we wanted on the edge of the solar panel. We slid those until we got them to the roof structure. It wasn't too difficult to see where the roof structure was, so we measured it out and were able to screw directly into it and secure those panels down properly. Next in that solar kit was the charge controller. It's a decent charge controller and it's gonna do the job well. Um, I liked that you were able to input which kind of batteries you had, if it was lead acid or AGM or if you had lithium. We were able to configure that in the settings, which I really appreciated about this. One thing that surprised me about this charge controller is it had four stages for charging. It had the, the bulk, absorption, float, and it even had the equalize function in there. In their situation, they won't need that equalize function, uh, but it's nice that it's there, I think, for other applications. Next, we also upgraded the battery bank. Look at this battery bank. You got four lithium batteries, 100 amp hours each, which 100 amp hours on lithium is more than 100 amp hours in your typical RV lead acid battery uh, because you can drain these so deep and so far without damaging them. So I'm impressed. It's a nice battery bank. Here's what I like about these Battleborn lithium batteries is they now have 400 amp hours of usable energy. With their batteries that they had before, if they wanted to play it really safe and not damage the batteries, uh, you can take them down to 50%. You can only take half of that 215 amp hours. So you can only use 107 amp hours before you want to charge those batteries back up. The type of batteries that these are, it's one of the safest type of lithium technology they have. It's not gonna explode or catch on fire like you've heard about these phones doing. And the technology that they actually put inside the battery, they have uh, what's called a, a BMS, which is a battery management system built right into each of these batteries. That BMS helps protect the battery. And one of the amazing things that it does is it allows this battery to be a drop into your current system. Now, if it was me and my recommendation, I would update how I charge that battery because it can be a lot more efficient if you pair it with a charger that is built for these lithium batteries. The only real drawbacks that I see on these, these batteries is the temperature. You don't want them getting overly hot and you don't want them getting too cold. But that's something that's easy to overcome because you don't have to vent these batteries. They can, they can go inside if you wanted to. So that's not really a big deal. Really the biggest drawback for people is the upfront payment of buying these batteries. For lithium, these are priced competitively and once you start factoring the longevity and the cycles and the amp hours you can use, it makes sense, but it's a big payment upfront. 
Next, let's take a look at the Victron Multi Plus. Now, this is kind of a bunch of devices packed into one tight unit. Let me show you basically the devices that they packed into this unit. Oh, down underneath here, this is where we have our inverter, the pure sine wave inverter. Um, over here is where we have the, uh, this is the, the switch. It's a little automatic switch that is gonna switch between uh, the inverter and shore power. We have to manually do it for the uh, generator. And tucked behind all this mess of wires is our converter charger. So that converts the AC power to DC and charges the batteries. The neat thing about this MultiPlus unit is all these things are basically included in one unit. There's so much that this device can do that uh, I'm not gonna cover that all in this video, but for this application, I think this is a fantastic piece of equipment to put in there. So here are the things that I like about this device. I like that it's all in one unit. I like how fast the switch is in it from going to shore power. If you lose that, how quickly it switches over to the inverter. I like the, the size of the inverter. I think 3000 watts is a great size for an inverter for their needs. I like the converter charger out of this. It uh, seems very customizable. Um, you can set it up for your situation and what your configuration is on your batteries. And I think it's brilliant that if they're plugged into like a, a 30 amp or something smaller, this, you can set it up to where it'll make up that power difference so that it'll, it'll feel like you're on 50 amps. Another item that I'm a huge fan that they, they put into the system is their battery monitor. They did the BMV 712, which is the, the Bluetooth version from Victron of the battery monitor system. It's the same one that I have. I've done a whole video on that, but the capabilities of this thing and the information that it provides for you is absolutely phenomenal. This is one of those things that I would recommend anybody to install because it gives you so much information packed in, into one little monitor. It's so much more than just uh, reading your voltage and, and trying to figure out how much capacity you have left in your batteries. It'll calculate your amp hours in, your amp hours out is one of the biggest features. It'll give you a, alarms for low voltage and relays if you wanted to have it start a generator for you. It really just gives you all the information that you need to, to monitor your, your battery bank and know what's happening in your, your system. The last thing we installed is the easy start on the AC, which allows them to potentially use their AC off of their battery bank using the inverter. I haven't gotten to see how long you can run it on the batteries, but it is possible to run it off of your batteries with this easy start. It makes it uh, less of a draw in the beginning, not such a, a hard hit, and it's supposed to kind of even that out and make it possible to actually run your AC off your batteries. So for the install, I'll show you some of the stuff of how it actually went into their rig, but I also wanna show you uh, somewhat of a, a simplified schematic uh, to show you how all the pieces fit together. Sometimes I think it's easier to, to see it all in one place and it, it's hard to picture it when it's spread across the rig. So uh, let's look at the install and I'll try and fill in any of the pieces that I missed maybe in this description of the equipment that we used. Anytime that you're gonna plan a, a system like this or an upgrade, I think it's it's a great idea to, to map it out and figure out what you're doing. This was kind of the, the quick sketch that I did uh, when Mark was telling me about the equipment that we were gonna be putting together. I just wanted to see it all in one place, how it was gonna fit together and see if there was any missing pieces that we needed to, to order or get or think about. Um, I, I think it's, it's helpful in, in making it as efficient as possible when you go to install it. Now saying that, and after we even laid out on paper what we were doing, uh, we were still missing pieces. It it's always seems inevitable that you end up at Home Depot and you're, you're missing a, a wire for here or a cable in between there. But let's pull up that diagram that I, I made uh, to, to break it down and try and make it as simple as possible to understanding how this all fits together. And if you're planning your own system, I know there's different ways of calculating how much solar you need, how much battery bank that you're gonna need, uh, but Zamp really does have a, a very simple diagram to get you started, giving you an idea of how many panels and batteries and all that.
So let's dive into the, the heart of this install and let's look at the batteries uh, because the way that these are wired are completely different than the way that they were wired before. Where they used to have the two six volt golf cart batteries, uh, they were wired in series so that you would add the voltage together uh, to come up with your battery. When you wire things in series, you add the voltage and not the amp hour capacity. Now that these are gonna be wired in parallel, meaning that we tie the positive to the positive to the positive, and on the opposite side, we tie the negative to the negative to the negative, they're in parallel, we're gonna add the amp hours. So that's how we now have 400 amp hours of capacity. Right next to our batteries, we have the shunt, and the, the shunt is key to connecting it to the battery monitor. It, it's what is gonna allow you to be able to calculate how many amps are going in, how many amps are going out. Uh, it's gonna be able to tell you your, your voltage on your battery. It gives all the information through this little device. Wiring your shunt is crucial, but is very simple. Now, the shunt handles the negative side of your battery, and it is the only thing that connects to your battery bank. If there are any other negative wires connecting to the battery bank, your battery monitor will not calculate things properly. So you can see it's the only wire connecting the battery bank to the entire system. Now the shunt has a couple more necessary connections. It has a wire that's gonna connect to the positive side of the battery. It's gonna give power to our battery monitor and it's gonna give the information it needs from that side of the battery. Now we have a low volt wire, it looks like a phone wire, and it's gonna connect from the shunt and go to wherever you would like to mount your battery monitor display. And coming off of the batteries going to our fuse panel, we have a disconnect. So if we wanted to disconnect it for storage or uh, for working on it, we could do that. Now let's cover the, the MultiPlus. That's our charger, inverter, switch, and all that goodness packed into one package. This is one of the things that I love about this system. The way you feed the MultiPlus is from the shore power, you're going to uh, pull one of the hot legs, a neutral, and a ground, and you're gonna go straight to the MultiPlus the other hot leg with a neutral and a ground, you wanna to take to your breaker panel directly. And then the out of the MultiPlus for the AC side, you're going to take that to the other side of your breaker panel, because your breaker panel has two hot legs if you have a 50 amp service. So if you have a 30 amp service, then you're only gonna have one hot leg and this MultiPlus will feed it all. You won't have to divide up what you're gonna have run and what you're gonna have not run on the inverter. So that covers the AC side of the MultiPlus. Now, connecting the DC side of this is pretty simple. We're gonna connect to the negative terminal on the MultiPlus and go straight to the shunt. Now the shunt is already connected to the battery and we also can ground the shunt to the frame of the trailer. And on the positive side, we're gonna connect to the positive terminal, go straight to a shutoff. From the shutoff, we go to a fuse and from the fuse, we then go to the positive terminal on the opposite side of our battery bank and connect to that. Here's the interesting part about this setup. When we're plugged into shore power, the MultiPlus is going to push power into the batteries, and when we disconnect from that, the inverter's gonna kick in, the batteries are then going to supply the power through the MultiPlus to your panel. That's so simple and convenient, I love it. So now that we have all that operational, basically the solar would then be an add-on. So let's start with the solar panels. We have our three solar panels up top. Each of those have an individual fuse before they go into the combiner box. And these get wired in parallel. So all the positives get tied together, the negatives get tied together, and then we go straight to the charge controller. Some people might like to add a disconnect just before the charge controller to make it easier, quicker, to be able to power everything off if you needed to. But we didn't want to duplicate anything. It already had fuses in between the panels and the charge controller. Then from our charge controller, we have the negative side that's going to connect to the shunt. And on the positive side, we have a breaker disconnect before we go directly to the batteries. There's a few different ways that you can configure this, but the way that we installed it here is we went straight to the batteries. That way, if they wanted to disconnect any loads from the batteries, it doesn't hinder the batteries from getting charged, but we can still turn that off from that other disconnect breaker. I liked the option of being able to charge the batteries when you disconnect any load from the battery. Now, when we installed it on the rig, it's not as easy as just drawing the lines on the computer, but uh, we pulled the coroplast down from underneath the, the sheeting underneath the rig, and we ran our wires and supported them underneath there to be able to make our runs from the, the panel to the equipment near the, the batteries and the inverter and the, the MultiPlus and all that. 
So it was nice to keep everything nice and tight in this bay. Uh, we have the inverter, the charger, and the batteries all basically right next to each other with the fuses and the disconnect. That way all of our runs are very short. We don't have any line loss or long cables um, in between any of those. So uh, that really is the, the best way to do it. Now the wires that we used to make all of our connections, uh, we had made by, by Mark at Premier DC Power. Um, he made all these out of, out of polar wire, which was super flexible, easy to work with. He crimped all the ends on and heat shrunk all that. So huge shout out to him, made that so much easier than us trying to make it and trying to find wire that would work. The, the amp rating on that wire is outstanding and it's so flexible. Well, I hope that this was helpful. I hope that you enjoyed this. So if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. Huge shout out to Keep Your Day Dream. Mark, thanks for letting me help out on this project and get to play with some of this fun equipment. And if you haven't already, you wanna check out Mark's video as they continue to use the system and learn it and see how it works out for them. So remember to get out there, have fun, and if we don't see you on the road, hopefully we will see you in the next video.